Well, it is here in West Michigan. It is November the 7th. It is a Monday morning. It is 9.48 in the morning. The sun is shining. It's a good morning to go out in the field if you're a farmer and harvest the corn. I'm sitting here in the dining room. You can probably see in the back of me that the kitchen's not done. They haven't put in the floor yet. They haven't put in the counters. We don't have the new refrigerator put in the kitchen. It's a lot of work to be done. We don't have the sink put in. So I don't know when it's going to be done. Hopefully by the end of this month we'll have our kitchen done. So I'm sitting here this morning feeling freaked. I don't know, you know, I wake up in the morning and I get this feeling of anxiety and dread. And I remember for years, I get up in the morning and feel this way and have to go to work. And I worked at a, a horrible job. And I did it for I don't know, at least 13, 14 years. And it was it just killed me. I don't think uh, I think something broke inside of me. Never been the same after that job. It's amazing how certain things in your life can just break you, and you're you're broken. And that's one thing. And when you're a Christian, that's one thing that that you dare not say to anybody. If you're a Christian, that you're broken. You're supposed to be happy in Jesus. You're supposed to be full of joy, full of feeling blessed and give all your troubles to Jesus. And, but I want to tell you folks, I'm broken. <laughs> I need Jesus to keep me together. I need Jesus to keep me going because I look around me in this world and I just want to scream. So I'm sitting here this morning. I got up at 445 because I went to bed really early. So I woke up at 445, got up, made a pot of coffee and ate a bowl of cereal and messed with the computer. Then I went back to bed at 630, got up at 8. And I've been reading this morning uh, this book, uh, Salvation on Sand Mountain. Snake Handling and Redemption in Southern Appalachia by Dennis Covington. I was reading this book yesterday and this morning. It came to my mind when I was thinking of this Southern writer, Harry Cruz. I was going to mention Harry Cruz along with Charles Bronsky. This, uh, I came across Harry Cruz a number of years, I don't know how many years ago, I was, um, I used, used to be a junk, a junk, junk, a junk place down the street from us, Joe's Junkyard, and he would have old books in his junk shop, and one day I walked in there and found a whole, a whole stack of Harry Cruz. Never heard of Harry Cruz. So I got these, and, uh, and I read, I read the other night there's coming a biography coming out on Harry Cruz called Blood, Bone, and Marrow, a biography of Harry Cruz by Ted Getter. Uh, the first biography of Harry Cruz, writer of the Dirty South, a wild man extraordinaire. Uh, the reviews from the New York Times, quote, a lean and pleasingly consumable book Harry Cruz led a big, strange, sad, and somewhat very American life that is well told in this biography on Harry Cruz. And then um, from the New Republic, does real justice to a complicated and oversized literary figure trying to separate the conjoined twins of Harry Cruz, the shit-kicking, vodka swindling legend, and Harry Cruz, the person is a delicate, messy operation. Blood, bone, and marrow manages it to do it without either dying on the table. 
So it goes to her describing this biography of Harry Cruz. First I'll mention his books. This is the classic Harry Cruz. This is a Harry Cruz reader. In here you have his very famous memoir, A Childhood, The Biography of a Place. You have Father, Sons, and Blood, The Gypsy Curse, a novel, The Car, The Car, a novel, and Climbing Tower. So this is a Harry Cruz reader. Uh, this is a classic. This is probably the best thing to start when you want to read Harry Cruz. He wrote a lot, a lot of books, and a lot of his books you can't, you can get them used, but you got to spend a lot of money. This is Munching of America. This is, I think, a novel. This is by Harry Cruz. And Scar Lover by Harry Cruz. It's, it's a novel. I think it is, yeah. It says here, Scar Lover is a miraculous, true-to-bone story of love and redemption at once, a classic Southern novel, purely unmistakable Harry Cruz. Running from the past that has scarred and blamed, blamed him, a tragic accident has destroyed his family. Pete Butcher avoids all personal contact. Then Sarah Leaner, the oddly beautiful girl next door, walks into his life slowly, sweetly, and with a determination almost Faulknerian in his ferocity, Sarah pulls Pete back into life into the ever-increasing complications of love, family, death, and deliverance. For Sarah has made Pete her own as she stakes her claim to see the miraculous power of love without boundaries of fear. So this is by Harry Cruz. It says here, Harry Cruz is the author of 12 novels, four books of nonfiction, numerous magazine articles. He lives in Gainesburg, Florida, where he teaches at the University of Florida. Well, Harry Cruz died a couple of years ago. He died when he was 73. And I have this novel by Harry Cruz, A Feast of Snakes. I have a hardback addiction, a edition of Munching an American, a novel by Harry Cruz. Uh, so yeah, he's... A lot of his books I don't have. I don't want to spend the money for them, but look for them at used book sales and uh, thrift stores. If you find any of them, contact me. I like to add to my collection. So yeah, so I was looking at those yesterday and today. And, and so when I was thinking of Harry Cruz and being a Southern writer, this book came to my mind as I showed earlier, Salvation in Sand Mountain which talks about snake handling among the Appalachian people. So in this morning I was reading for devotions, Paul's new perspective, charting a sociological journey by Garwood P. Anderson. So yeah, I'm writing in my diary. I'm on page 914 on this November the 7th, 2016. 9.57 in the morning, the sun is shining, and I'm feeling freaked. I should get get myself going. I should put my clothes on, street clothes, get in the car, and go somewhere. Take some photos. The light in, this, in the mornings in the late fall is really, really pretty when you're walking out in the country under trees and the way the sun filters through the trees. It's really pretty here in West Michigan. But like I said, I'm feeling sick inside. I just don't know if I can go outside. I should mow the lawn today, rake up the leaves. I should do a lot of things. I did make an appointment for Rudy, our dog, for the groomer this morning. So that's something off my list. So I don't know what else I was going to do. Like I said, I might mow the lawn today, but I don't know. So I'm hoping you're having a good Monday, a good week, and until next time, bye.